Welcome back to the second part about type 2 errors, where we'll continue to discuss the probability of committing a type 2 error. In this second video, we'll see how we can calculate the probability of a type 2 error of a two-sided test. We'll also discuss which parameters that affect the type 2 error. In the previous video, we discussed how to calculate the probability of a type 2 error for a one-tailed test. We'll now have a look at the two-tailed test. I here set the mean of the alternative distribution to 0.5 to better illustrate how the probability of a type 2 error is calculated. In the previous lecture, this value was set to either 1 or negative 1. For a two-sided test, where we test if the proposed mean is different from the mean according to the null hypothesis, the probability that we commit a type 2 error corresponds to the area in the interval in the alternative distribution between the two critical mean values according to the null hypothesis. Since each tail now covers 2.5%, the critical z-score value from a standard normal distribution is now 1.96 instead of 1.64 that we used for a one-sided test. We use the same standard deviation and sample size as in our previous example. If we begin the critical value of 1.96, a standard deviation of 1, and a sample size of 6, we see that the corresponding critical mean values in this example are now negative 0.8 and positive 0.8. If the proposed mean value is 0.5, the probability that we will commit a type 2 error is the area between negative 0.8 and positive 0.8 in the alternative distribution with a mean of 0.5 and a standard deviation of 1 divided by the square root of 6. The following equation can be used to calculate the area in the middle. Where this part of the equation calculates the area to the left of 0.8, including also this area which belongs to the rejection region. This part of the equation only calculates the area to the left of negative 0.8. When you subtract with the area to the left of negative 0.8, we therefore only get the area in the middle region, which corresponds to the probability of committing a type 2 error for two-sided test if the average weight change is actually 0.5 kilos. Let's plug in our example values to calculate the probability of committing a type 2 error. Remember that we here use a proposed value of 0.5. Since we use a two-sided test instead of a one-sided test, the critical value is now 1.96 instead of 1.64. We first plug in the values and then use the software to calculate the two areas of the standard normal distribution. The area to the left of 0.8 is about 0.7689 and the area to the left of negative 0.8 is 0.0007. The area between these two critical values is therefore 0.7682 which corresponds to the probability of committing a type 2 error. We'll now discuss what affects the probability of committing a type 2 error. In the previous video, we used the following example values to calculate the probability of committing a type 2 error. We proposed that the diet would reduce the average weight by 1 kilo. Whereas the null hypothesis states that the diet has no effect, which means that the average weight change is zero. We assumed a standard deviation of 1 and used the sample size of 6 individuals and we used a one-sided left tail test with a significance level of 5%, which gives us a critical value of 1.64. By using these values, we can calculate the corresponding critical x bar value to negative 0.67, which we calculated in the previous video. The area to the right-hand side of negative 0.67 in the alternative distribution is as we have seen previously 0.21, which means that the probability that we commit a type 2 error is 
So, what will happen if the proposed weight loss is 1.5 kilos instead of 1 kilo? Then the difference between the mean values will be 1.5 instead of 1, which will move the alternative distribution to the left, so that the distribution is centered around negative 1.5 instead of negative 1. This will reduce the risk of committing a type 2 error from 21% to only about 2%. When we increase the difference between the proposed value and the null value, we will therefore reduce the risk of committing type 2 error. We now have a look at what happens with the type 2 error if we reduce the significance level. For example, if we change the significance level of the one-sided test from 5% to 2.5%, the critical line will move a bit to the left. Since the critical z-score value is now 1.96 instead of 1.64, the critical x-bar value is reduced from negative 0.67 to negative 0.8, which increases the area to the right-hand side in the alternative distribution, reducing the significance level, which reduces the probability for a type 1 error, increases the probability of committing a type 2 error. We'll now have a look at what happens with the type 2 error if we reduce the standard deviation. For example, reducing the standard deviation from 1 to 0.8 will reduce the width of the distributions since the sample means are then expected to be generally closer to the population means. Changing sigma from 1 to 0.8 in the equation will also increase the critical x bar value from negative 0.67 to negative 0.53. A reduced standard deviation will reduce the probability of committing a type 2 error from 21% to about 8%. We will get about the same effect if we instead increase the sample size from 6 to 9 because the larger sample size decreases the spread of our sample means. Based on this simple analysis, we can conclude that we can reduce the probability of committing a type 2 error by increasing the significance level, or by increasing the sample size, or by reducing the standard deviation. In addition, we can reduce the probability of type 2 error by increasing the difference between the proposed value and the value according to the null hypothesis. However, the significance level is usually always set to 0 0.05 and it's not something that we simply just can increase in order to reduce the risk of a type 2 error. Also, the spread of the data is not something that we can do much about, which is generally true also for the effect of our treatment. This leaves us with the sample size, which is the main parameter for controlling the risk that we commit a type 2 error. The larger the sample size is, the less is the risk that we commit a type 2 error. In the next lecture, we will discuss the statistical power, which is related to the risk of committing a type 2 error. We will also discuss how we can calculate an appropriate sample size for our experiment. Thanks for watching.